In this video, I want to cover the installation and the common configuration of our emergency application companion um, application. First thing I want to highlight is there are three uh, kind of dependencies. Our application is built to work with the self-report application, the exposure management application, and it's built using kind of also has the mobile, the now mobile framework as part of it. So those three um, kind of applications or plugins need to be activated. Now in my environment, I've already got the now mobile app installed. I do also have, if I look at emergency, I've got self-report and exposure management. And a lot of my testing, if I didn't have the self-report and exposure management applications installed, it would install it as part of uh, the companion installation process. So you'll get the companion application from the ServiceNow store, and then it'll show up in your list of applications. And the installation is simple. You can basically say install. So now I refresh your menus and verify you see emergency app companion within your list. Now a couple things as far as our modules go. Health records is basically the same uh, view as your self-report, except we have our own view uh, to those health records just to add to custom additional details to it, which I'll show in a little bit. Contact support will open up a page where you can contact support for questions, uh, ask for update sets, report defects, etc. Properties is where a lot of the on-off switches of what we'll cover in the configuration are covered. If you need to support changes to messages, uh, labels, or you need to localize it in different languages, there are message records, quite a few, that support all those different components. And then some of the development pieces behind this, the script includes and the, the service portal widgets. Now with the script includes, I want to highlight too, we've included this customer emergency app util, which is basically an extended version of this other script include called Emergency App Util, which allows you to add your own functions or extend our functions to adjust them uh, to meet your needs. All right, first configuration task is if you have an existing self-service portal you would like our banner to show up on or the, the modal pop-up to report service health, what you'll do is you'll go to the service portal, in this case this is the out-of-box service portal, the page in which you want this to load, likely the home page. You can then control right click to pull up this context menu, go to page and designer, now you are going to need to be in the proper uh, application scope to change this. So I've got to be in the global scope, which I'll confirm. So I'll move to the global scope. All right. And then I'll filter over here for EAC portal helper, which is here. And then I'm just going to stick this on the page anywhere. I'm going to stick it down here in the bottom. Now you're not going to see any immediate change on here, but as soon as I go to refresh this page, it's then going to load that widget and check whether or not I've got any existing health records already out there. If I don't, it's going to pop up a modal and ask me to fill in my health status. Now, one thing to highlight here, you'll see there's a couple of different styles that you'll see the, the menu's been covered up because this banner's been loaded on here. And this is because I'm I fit the HR role as an admin. I also have people reporting to me, so I've got employees that uh, are showing up in my HR. Now there's some styles we recommend changing on here to support this overall. So first of all, and you'll see all this in our uh, installation and configuration guide. So let me show you a couple of common styles that you can do here first of all. So there's a section here in terms of styling the, the banner, the colors, the height, the width, background colors, etc. So for example, there's some example ones in here that you can add to typically recommend is adding them to the theme record that's associated with the service portal. So in this case, the stock theme record. I can go stick these in here, just to give you an example. Right, and as I load this, let's see now it's got this red with some blue, and if there were buttons, they would show up there as well. And I'm still covering up the menu, so the other part of this that's included in that document is adjusting, adding a style to the page to make room for that header so I'll go to the index page properties. You'll see this in the dock. Add some margins to allow the banner to sit on the top of the home page. So now if I refresh that, you'll see now my header and my banner can kind of coexist. Now you'll also notice as I get out of the page, it's only loading that banner on the page in which those widgets are loaded. So you'll, if you want to load this, the banner on multiple pages, you'll have to add that widget to multiple pages and add that same style to make room for the header as well. Now this is really going to be dependent on how you configure your portal, whether or not you need to add those styles, uh, but those are kind of an idea of how you want to do this. 
Now you'll notice I'm getting prompted as I come to this page because I haven't filled out health information. I should highlight here if we go to App Companion. These are all controlled by these different properties. The Show Portal Modal will highlight that. There's an append uh, banner to the top, which is adding that banner. And then there's an option to say later. And then how long do I get reminded for popping up that modal? So this is the deferral days. Now, one other common configuration I'll highlight here too is that uh, you'll see in this drop down of health statuses, these are all kind of uh, unhealthy statuses of I've, I've either been exposed, <clears throat> I'm currently sick, I have symptoms. I'm now coming returning to work or I don't want to say there's no healthy status here. So we do recommend or as an option you can add a healthy status to the list and our applications have been configured to support that. So just to show quickly how that's done, you want to get into the uh, emergency self-report application because this is a configuration to that application. You can go to the sys choice table. You can look for these crisis task records and specifically this request type field. Right, so these are the different statuses. So in here, what we can add is a label could be anything. And then the key part here is we're looking for a value in the drop down the list called healthy. So we're looking for the value, whatever the label is, you can change whatever you want there. I'm gonna go put negative one as my sequence so it shows up first in the list. As I add that, and I refresh my page, you'll see I have an I am healthy status now as an as a available option in my drop down list. And another configuration option I'll highlight here is on the mobile app. You'll see in our demos a list of knowledge articles that can show up in this self report application in addition to my ability to report my health, report health of my employees if I have uh, managerial rights. Um, and the, the knowledge articles that will show up on this list are based off of properties. So let me show you what those are. So if you go to the app companion, you'll see there's a system property here. It's looking for any knowledge articles that contain uh, the, the COVID keyword in the meta tags. But in addition to that, it's also using the self-report portal. So this emergency self-report portal, and there'll be a list of knowledge bases here. So it's going to bind this to knowledge articles that are published in this knowledge base that match that keyword. So just to show, I created a couple knowledge articles out here. Work from home's tips and tricks, basically no body. But you'll see they've got in the meta tag, meta field, I've got COVID, COVID-19, COVID-19, different combinations of that. I have another one out here as well. And then in essence, kind of the way that'll show up on our, on our app, and they'll look something like this. All right, so there's my two knowledge articles out there that I can interact with and see the details of as part of it. Okay, I've also mentioned that in the demo data there was checklist templates so where those are. Let me highlight how those work. So you go to checklist template.list. Unless you have your own templates, you, you will see those, but if you can all search for EAC underscore, and then these match the EA score, EAC underscore, these match the exact values of the different health statuses that come in. So HR ones have a different kind of uh, uh, set of checklist, the sick, the work from home, quarantine returning back to work. So let me show you what's kind of in here. So basically there's a list of items. The name is what's displayed. The order of zero means it's going to be first in the list. Uh, one is going to be the second one in the list. And these are in essence the different checklist items. Now while these will show up on your tasks will look like something like this when you go to your health records. And again, this is part of our app companion of uh, having the health records in a different view. It has this advanced view depending on the health status, in this case reporting symptoms, a different list of checklist items will show up on this. All right, same if you were to look for kind of the HR versions of these, we'll have a list of HR related kind of task activities to be performed here. Now this again is driven by the properties. So if we go app companion, let's see under the properties, there is, a there is a, an option here to generate task templates using, or task checklists using templates. The other thing I want to call attention to is if there is if there are no templates that match the health status so EAC healthy is an example uh, we just added that status it's going to generate no ch no checklist for that particular uh, crisis task right? it's only going to create those for those that match those statuses last thing I want to highlight is that uh, when you do report a, a sick or in quarantine kind of status it'll trigger going to exposure management uh, and triggering that activity 
You may not see that happen initially when I go to set this up, right? I just click that status, I don't see anything. And part of that is because you need to go through and set up the exposure management uh, application. In essence, connect to Office 365, put in a client ID, put in a tenant ID, uh, put in your certificate information. Once that's set up, what you should see is something that acts like this when I choose that status. It's going to start to prompt for what days were you exposed. Use this information to go reach into Office 365 to look for my calendar entries. And then prompt me based off of my different meetings that I've been in, which one of these had in-person contact. And then based off of that, who are the indi individuals that I've likely had uh, in-person contact with that have been potentially exposed. And then that will then log that against the impacted users. Last thing I want to highlight too is you will see if you have the virtual agent uh, chat bot, uh, we did package some, uh, some conversations with this. So you'll see if we go under here, you'll see some options for uh, exposed to COVID-19. You'll see a health update for my employees, update my health status. Now this is, uh, you're not going to see this as part of the application set. This comes as a separate update set. So if you need the update set, you'll kind of see that in our installation guide to contact support. The way in which you'll do that is you'll just go to our uh, app companion. There's a contact support link in here. You can define it as a question and say, I would like the uh, virtual agent chatbot conversation topic update set. We'll email that to you. You can then load that into your environment and you'll get those additional topics as part of your, uh, your package. So that covers the uh, kind of installation and the common configuration options of our application. Hope this was helpful and uh, thank you very much.